Hi, I'm Amanda Jane Woodall and welcome to my fashion school. 1950s Hollywood is known for its glamorous and perfect movie stars and this inspired a collective of misfits to start making short amateur films about the controversial and candid scenes of 1960s New York. And the queen of this art scene was known for being the perfect mix of cool and unconventional. It's Edie Sedgwick. Edith Minton Sedgwick was seventh of eight children born in Santa Barbara, California to Alice Delano DeForest and Francis Minton Sedgwick in 1943. They had a prestigious family history with her line of grandparents achieving breakthroughs in establishing laws and civil rights and co-signing the Declaration of Independence. Frances Sedgwick was commonly known as Fuzzy and was a philanthropist, a rancher and a sculptor who named Edith after his late aunt. Her home life was troubled despite their vast wealth because all the children felt that Fuzzy was narcissistic, controlling and abusive and the family were very isolated living on a ranch and they didn't interact very much with the outside world being raised by nannies and home educators. Fuzzy was an adulterer and this led to a volatile incident between him and Edie when she walked in on her dad in bed with another woman and he managed to convince her mother that Edie had just imagined this whole event because there was ongoing issues with her mental health and eating disorders. Edie was sent to boarding school in San Francisco at the age of 13 but she was soon taken back out again because of the severity of her mental health issues. She tried again in 1958 attending a Maryland school but again she failed to cope. By 1962 her father insisted that she be housed in a private psychiatric hospital and this was called Silver Hill and then she was admitted to an even more intensive hospital in New York where she did start to make some improvements. However, during this time it is thought that she actually became pregnant and had a termination which led to more trauma in her very young life. In 1963 Edie attended art school in Cambridge, Massachusetts alongside her cousin. And while she was there, she was incredibly popular amongst the Harvard socialites. And she spent much of her time socializing and partying. However, she was also experiencing a lot of emotional trauma because she lost her brothers, Francis Jr. and Robert within 18 months of one another due to their severe mental illness. In 1964, she moved to New York to pursue her ambitions in modeling, despite the reservations of her very controlling parents. In 1965, she met avant-garde artist Andy Warhol at a dinner party hosted by Lester Persky. Warhol was enamored by the lavish lifestyles of elite society because he had come from a very humble background and he soon fell in love with Edie's extraordinary personality, her looks and her access to generational wealth. Edie was invited to the Silver Factory which was a well-known hangout for figures of the 1960s counterculture who with Andy made experimental art and films and Edie accidentally starred in one of these films after she came for a screen test. The film was called Vinyl and you could just see Edie dancing and smoking in the far side shot. After this introduction to art films, Edie became one of Andy Warhol's superstars 
and she began to play parts in films such as a cameo in the film Horse and she even got her own film called Poor Little Rich Girl which was filmed in her apartment during 1965. Edie starred in several of Andy's short films throughout the 1960s and it brought shame upon her family and to her parents who decided that they were going to cut her off financially. Well Edie actually made headlines in the mainstream fashion media for her very interesting take on the modernist fashion movement and she was photographed by Vogue in 1965 and labelled a youth Quaker and the girl of the year. She developed her own look where she wore dance leotards and tights with extravagant furs and huge chandelier earrings. Her hair was cut short and she dyed it a silvery blonde and started wearing really thick black eye makeup and this was her take on Andy Warhol's wig and dark sunglasses so she was making herself the female version of Andy and they became inseparable attending every celebrity function together even going on TV interviews together, including one very infamous appearance where Andy Warhol refused to speak on the Merv Griffin show. During this time, she began living in the Chelsea Hotel and it is alleged that she got close to folk singer Bob Dylan, who was also living there at the time. And she signed to his management label, with the ambition that they would star in a movie together and Edie very much had a crush on Dylan and she thought it was completely reciprocated. Although Bob Dylan had actually married his girlfriend Sarah Lowndes in 1965 and now he absolutely denies that he ever had any kind of relationship with Edie. By late 1965, her relationship with Andy Warhol had begun to deteriorate when Edie asked Andy not to show her films anymore. And she did star in one more movie in 1966, but this was never actually released. And it came to a toxic end when in quite an unsensitive manner, Andy revealed to Edie that Bob Dylan was married. Edie became heavily involved in hard drug use. She'd taken drugs throughout her career, but now she was heavily reliant on them. And it's rumoured during this time she also faced another pregnancy and another termination. She entered into an ill-fated relationship with a close friend of Bob Dylan's and became heavily dependent on barbiturates. She did attempt to make a legitimate career in fashion and film. However, her addiction and her reputation made it difficult for studios to take a risk on her. She started acting again in 1967, starring in the film Chow Manhattan, which was a semi-autobiographical look at her experiences in New York. And this film is very dark, it's very troubled, the actors on set are very heavily intoxicated and the plotline makes no sense. The filming for this movie was absolute chaos because Edie required hospitalisation in 1968 and 1969 because of her deteriorating condition. And while she was in hospital in 1970, she met and married Michael Brett Post in 1971. And she was desperate to tell her side of the story. So she got back in touch with the directors of Chow Manhattan to start shooting again in California. However, it wasn't a great experience for her and she had to do a lot of audio tapes to kind of convey her message and these were actually used in the film which was released in 1972. 
It is reported that during her marriage to Michael Post, she actually managed to clean up her drug addiction. However, when once she was prescribed a pain medication, she became reliant on that. In 1971, she attended a fashion show at the Santa Barbara Museum where she drank alcohol and went to the after party before being picked up by her husband. And he recalls that she told him she didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. Before they went to bed, Post actually administered her medication to her and the two went to sleep. However, the combination of barbiturates and alcohol would prove to be fatal as Edie struggled to breathe. And sadly, on November the 16th, 1971, Edie Sedgwick lost her life at just 28 years old. Edie remains a pop culture icon until this day, and she is featured in many music lyrics, films and fashion and art until this day and the films that she made with Andy Warhol are now seen as art pieces that encapsulate counterculture in 1960s New York and her poor little rich girl brand has now become a favourite of marketers and writers and celebrity influencers who are famous for just being famous. And so Edie was truly way ahead of her time. It's just a shame she couldn't get the support that she needed for her mental health and vulnerabilities.